So the first question is, where slash when was your last vacation? I just went to Hawaii. Oh, nice. And it's, it's, it's great. We stayed at the same hotel that's in Punch Drunk Love. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and you were able to leave, which is good. And I assume no one died? Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm joined by Mickey Keating, the writer and director of Off Season, which is coming to theaters, VOD, and on demand on March 11th, 2022. We're going to talk to him right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Uh, so thanks so much for joining me. This is Mickey Keating, the writer and director of Off Season, which is coming to theaters, VOD, and on demand on Feb or March 11th, 2022. It is an unsettling vacation film, just a perfect way to kick off our summer season. So thanks so much for that. I was really looking forward to the summer, and now I'm not. So thank you. Great. That's that's the goal, right? <laughs> so like, mission accomplished. <laughs> awesome. So I, I, I guess... I don't even know when this movie was like started. Maybe this was pre-COVID. Maybe this was during COVID. You know, what was the inspiration for this? You wrote and directed this. So I guess, you know, is this a personal trauma? Is this just something that you're always worried about? Like, I'm worried I'm going to go somewhere and then be stuck. Like, how, how did you inspire or what inspired this uh, this movie? Um, yeah. So I, I grew up in Florida and I visited uh, a lot of like, you know, you'd always go to the beach, right? I, it was like nothing to do. Let's go to the beach. And so, you know, oftentimes you would go and uh, it would be during the downtime, off season, uh, cold. And so, you know, if you're walking on the beach, you might not see another person. You might see somebody like ghostly in the distance. And I always thought that was like a very interesting kind of uh, uh thing to kind of tackle you know fading americana tourist traps particularly F florida uh w was something that was really exciting for me and um yeah we shot this movie right before covid we wrapped like like three weeks before uh oh, wow. the shutdown uh you know we were flying back from florida and everyone was like oh did you hear about this th you know um so we were very very lucky if we had started three weeks later we would have had to shut the movie down which i think about a lot <laughs> Whew. Uh, so I'd like to correct something. You said it gets cold in Florida, but I don't, I don't believe that's true. Although I didn't grow up there, but... Uh... Well, for a Floridian, 65 <laughs> degrees is quite chilling. <laughs> okay. A charmed a charmed life down there, it seems. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that Although, is... I, funny enough, I mean, when we were shooting, especially with Richard Brake, there was one night where it was like 35 degrees or something and 30 oh, miles an hour, 30 mile an hour winds. So uh, it throws, Florida throws some things at you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've, I've seen that in the news. There's, there's always something about Florida going on. So, yeah. <laughs> and that is that is amazing timing. Yeah, I can't imagine, especially for an indie film, to like start it up and then have to shut everything down and hope that you know at some point the actors' schedule opens up and you can get the funding to, to restart everything. Like that, that sounds insane. That, I'm really glad that you were able to finish it right before. Yeah, logistically, I mean, especially because most of the crew and cast were brought from Los Angeles, and so to have to pack up and go home and then bring everybody back would have been an absolute nightmare. Uh, so yes, we are very, very lucky. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you mentioned you filmed in Florida. Uh, I, I was actually curious, like, is this a real, I don't know, island, peninsula, whatever you want to call it? Because there is a bridge, but I couldn't tell if it was like a, like a real island and there's a beach, but it's also like a lot of jungle-ish scenes. Like, is this just this very unique place that you were able to film at? Um, yes. So basically, uh, New Smyrna Beach, it's, I don't know the proper uh, term for it. It's mostly an island. I think there's like a little connection up at the top, but you have to drive over multiple bridges to get there. The bridges go up and down. Um, you know, uh, what was really kind of scary was like, you know, we had to have that bridge go up and down and up and down. And all I was thinking the whole time was like, this is a very, very, very expensive government owned <laughs> bridge. If it breaks, <laughs> uh, you know, the state of Florida will own off season the film. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So uh, it, what's funny, though, is like I hadn't been to this town in 15 years, maybe. And um, I wrote it so that it would be like this kind of trapped in time, what you see in the movie. But what I didn't realize was that condos and everything had really been built up since I had been there last. So strategically, we had to kind of shoot around that. Uh, we shot on the national seashore for a lot of the jungle stuff. Um, so yeah, so it really was the picking and choosing uh, where we wanted to film to make it look like it was a lot more isolated than it actually is. 
Yeah, it doesn't have that classic Americana feel. If there's just high rises all around. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, someone's gonna be there. You know, even down yeah. to like, I was like, gotta get rid of like the Bud Light signs in the bar because you know, why would Bud Light be supporting this little you know isolated town? <laughs> that's true. That's true. And it's also just a good beer choice. Although Bud Light, I'm sure it makes fine American beers. It's just not my thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, so I, I guess. You had this vision, you wrote this script. How did you get this cast of all? I think this film is basically like a Jocelyn show. Like she does so much in this movie. So how did you get her involved? And, you know, you mentioned Richard Brake. I loved having him in there. Some of the other cast members. How did you get everyone kind of involved in your indie vacation horror project? Um, so I have been a fan of Jocelyn's forever. And I basically, it was like a shot in the dark. We had our casting director reach out to her reps and see if she'd even be interested in you know doing something like this and she did and we sat down and like within five minutes i was like this is the person to be the main you know she is just a great actor and she's you know got like such a timeless 70s kind of look uh mm -hmm. which i really really love and um you know and she's just a really an all around just like great person to to film a movie with because she's very you know uh professional and and you know especially with like all the crazy elements and weather and everything she was just so down to to carry this movie on her shoulder so i was very very lucky about that joe swanberg i've been a fan of his as a filmmaker forever since i was in college i was like you know i loved his movies and so i met him through larry fessenden and uh i emailed him and i was just like do you want to play this role and he's like yes i want to get back into acting a little bit more um and then richard break i had met at sundance because we had um he had uh a uh, 31 he was in 31 and i had a movie called carnage park playing at sundance and so we met at a at a party and i was like you're brilliant in 31 you're amazing and so i swore i, I was going to cast him in something and, and it all worked out fortunately <laughs> that is awesome and um I, I love the acting i love the setting but the strange thing is i think my favorite part about this movie is the music and the sound so mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, who was involved in picking that music? I mean, you mentioned you wanted kind of an Americana feel, and I think that was, you know, exactly the feel that you got from this. So how did, how did that come about? Because I was just, it was surprising to have this beautiful, you know, soundtrack over these kind of unsettling scenes. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it really is a testament to uh, my, my producers, you know, agreeing to kind of go down this rabbit hole of clearing this, these songs. I love the, you know, I've loved that Alan Morehouse uh, song that's also featured in The Fog, um, but I've been obsessed with it for, for years and years and years. And so the minute that I knew that I could use the same kind of library catalog that John Carpenter used, I was like, well, I would be foolish to not you know feature these <laughs> songs in and then that song turn around look at me um i i don't know where i heard that the first time but i was always obsessed with it and uh i we i my editor valerie she actually cut it it to it uh, the scene to it first and made it a full musical moment and from that minute i was just like we have to get the rights to this song no matter what and so um yeah it really was that kind of but you know that's always a challenge because you never know whether these songs will be a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to clear, and I had to beg, you know, Warner Music and and different places to uh, to let us use it. But um, and then yeah, and the score uh, is a he's it, my composer's name Schaefer James. He he's got a band. He's not like a, a traditional composer in that a movie composer in that sense. And he just really went along for the ride of building the ambience and having it seem otherworldly and surreal. So um, yes, thank you. Uh, the mu music and sound is a huge passion of mine. Yeah, no, I love that. It seems like you were really involved in that on top of writing and directing, like scoring as well is, is difficult. And I also really love that you're able to get the rights to that song because you filmed an entire scene based on that song. And I'm like, oh, maybe we could make a sound alike or something. Yeah, well, sure. You know, it's like because I said to 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 everyone involved, I was like, if we can't get the song, we have to recut the, the scene. Yeah. And so it's just better for everybody <laughs> if we find a way to, to clear this, this song. And uh, yeah, I was very fortunate, but um, you know, it's like those are like, like heavy ambience and the, the soundtrack being its own character is something that I very, very uh, uh, I'm in love with. So I try to make an effort in that way. Um, and I also love the, I don't know, the chapter markings. Uh, I thought that was like a clever touch. Is that something that you've done in the past or was that just, this felt like the right time to have this kind of like older, I don't know, silent movie era almost uh, chapter dividers in the film? 
Uh, yeah, I, so I we first used that in a movie I made called Darling, um, where we did we went through six chapters, um, and then for this one, you know, to kind of go back to the idea of Southern Gothic stories and and um, and things like that, I was like, there's no better time th than to use the chapter marks to make this almost feel like a spooky old book, you know. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And also, another thing I noticed that it's probably not going to be something that people are going to talk about. I loved in the credits how you had very clear credits of who was who, because as someone who watches a lot of you know, indie movies that may not have the best IMDb uh, mm -hmm. setups, it's really nice to have very clean credits where you can go back, oh, that, that was that person. Oh, that was that person. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, you know, it's like, we. I always love not, you know, when it's the old card style instead mm -hmm. of a, a scroll. Um, so yes, yes. And and everyone was so, you know, so great. You know, I love working with all these actors. So I just wanted, you know, to celebrate them as much as I could by the end of the film. <laughs> and you know, one thing I also really liked, was it really tough? I noticed that everything in this film was kind of un unsettling you even made like a lawyer's office on something which people normally associate with good feelings was, was that was that tough to do was that... oh, well not for me i'm terrified of lawyers and <laughs> no, no one no one likes lawyers i know <laughs> and legal you know legal proceedings and so that was not a stretch that was that was just from my own neuroses um but uh but yeah and, and that was actually the only thing that we we shot in los angeles and so we um I like one in my big high rise, you know, kind of mm -hmm. all, so all that's practical. None of that is, uh, is fake. Yeah. And then, you know, law lawyers are practical uh, uh, and yes. maybe fake. So, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. both. <laughs> uh, so I know we have limited time. So I'm going to switch. I call it the lightning round. It's just lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your experiences map to things that happen in the film. You can feel free not to answer them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Sure. So the first question is where slash when was your last vacation? I just went to Hawaii. Oh, nice. And it's, it's, it's great. We stayed at the same hotel that's in Punch Drunk Love. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and you were able to leave, which is good. And I assume no one died? No one died. Although I did find out all I wanted to do was feed the feral chickens. And I found out that if you feed a feral <laughs> chicken, it's like $500 to $1,000 per chicken. So <laughs> so that could have been a problem if I had. <laughs> yeah, no, that, 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 there's your indie budget right there. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, When you rack up $100,000 worth of chicken, you know. Yeah. You, uh... <laughs> and you don't, even, you don't even get to eat them, right? Like that's just the fine you have to pay for doing it. You don't, even, you don't get to like actually enjoy them, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, very, we, uh, we avoided that. So, uh, but poor chickens went hungry. <laughs> uh, well, such is life. Um, next question is, have you ever been stuck somewhere due to like a bridge or weather, uh, you know, been stranded in a, in a place? Oh yeah. I mean, I was last, a couple of years ago, we were up in Idlewild and it like was like a blizzard up there and, uh, we were stuck. We were staying at this cabin and it was like three feet of snow and we couldn't get out and it was really terrifying. <laughs> I was like, I'm living in off season right now. That sounds like a perfect premise for off season too. Right. The, yeah. The revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe that would just be the normal season in, in the, in the, in the mountains. So maybe that's just season. Right. Yeah. Season. And I was like, we don't have enough alcohol or anything to make this tolerable. <laughs> we got to get out. <laughs> Truly a horror movie right there. <laughs> uh, what was your, or have you ever had like a strange bar or saloon experience? The, the, the bar scene in this was very unsettling. So I'm just curious if you've got anything like that or, or strange in a different way. You know, I, I absolutely love dive bars and I, the seedier, the better. And so I make it, a, I, I love Las Vegas, not because I gamble, but I just love the world of Las Vegas. So we kind of, every time I go there, I try to make the effort to find the seediest, shadiest bar possible. Never anything as weird as what happens in off season, but you definitely run into some crazy characters who are hopped up on something besides booze. And uh, it's always for an exp a good experience. Yeah, I mean, feeding feral chickens, finding shady bars in, in Las Vegas. You seem like you live on the edge. It's, it's, it's a dangerous <laughs> I, life I, that you live. I am incredibly lame. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever been surprised by a will? Oh, no, but actually um, somebody who I won't say uh, was at that a jumping off point for off season was somebody that I know basically got all of a sudden their parent passed away and they realized that the entire will had been completely changed oh, and wow. cut most of the family out and only an outlier who no one really, you know, knew was really part or a member of the family got all the money. So that's actually, so that part of off season 
was a reference to that person uh, mm-hmm. who I cannot say because they'll be very upset with me. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, you hear stuff like that, right? Like, you know, I always like, oh, that's like a movie or that's like a true crime podcast. You actually hear it happening to the real people. That's, that's yeah, crazy. yeah, 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 for sure. And and yeah. I was like, well, that's horrifying. And so uh, typing away and that's in the movie now. <laughs> yeah. And then like, what do you do? Do you fight it? Or do you, are you like, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a, it's such a scary and confusing situation. They were devastated. And, yeah. and, um, and yeah, it, it was really kind of, up to, I don't know whatever happened with that. I should probably check in. Um, <laughs> you know, all, but, uh, all sorts of new sequels for, for you to write. Um, so it sounds like maybe it was, it was this Island. Did you ever vacation somewhere regularly as a kid? Um, yeah, so actually, you know, this New, New Smyrna Beach where we shot, that was kind of um, uh, where we would go the most uh, of all the beaches uh, growing up. Um, and so, yeah, I was very, but I hadn't been back there in a long time. And so it was quite different. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm a little sentimental for, for New Smyrna, although I swore I was like, after, after off season, how difficult that shoot was, I cannot go to Florida for a little while for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's just good advice in general, but, uh, yeah, yeah right. Especially yeah. right now. I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy town down there. Um, and the last question is where do you want to be buried? Oh God. Uh, my dream is to, when I die, to be shot out of a cannon so that all the onlookers will be, uh, uh, rain, I will rain down upon all the onlookers so no one will ever forget me and that story will be shared for generations and generations. So don't need to be buried, just need to be blasted on all the onlookers. <laughs> well, there, you know what? Hey, sure, why not, right? <laughs> just write your will, it'll be fine. <laughs> right. Someone will have to do that or change the will. Yeah. Uh, so the film is out on March 11, 2022. It's in theaters, VOD, and, and uh, digital. Uh, I imagine you're promoting the film now. Uh, what do you have? What else do you have going on? Do you have other films that you're, you're working on or other ideas? Like we've, we've had several off-season two uh, ideas right in here, so I'm, I'm just curious what, what's next for you. Yes, I'm frantically writing two and three, um, revolving <laughs> on chickens and snow. Um, but I, I have a couple surprises that I'm I'm excited to kind of bring out. I, I went kind of three and a half years in between last movies, you know, this movie and the last movie, and so I'm going to have stuff out uh, a lot faster. Some of it is very dependent on whether you know we can make these movies work with COVID. Hopefully, it's all coming to an end soon. I. Yeah. Would love to do a movie in Las Vegas, but logistically, Las Vegas is very difficult for, you know, crowds and everything. Um, so with any luck, sooner than later, you'll hear about something that, that I have coming out. God will. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed, assuming that the world stays normal, which it hasn't done for the last like three or four years. But hey, maybe this will be the year. Even in the last five days. So, yeah. you know, uh, uh, yes, time. hopefully. But, uh, yeah. but yes. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me. This is uh, Mickey Keating, the writer and director of Off Season, and uh, thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me. This is great. Awesome. That was Mickey Keating, the writer and director of Off Season, which is coming to theaters, VOD, and on demand on March 11, 2022. It is an unsettling film that is just perfect to get our summer started and make you not want a vacation, but in a good horror way. Uh, if you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.